Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can find my other media and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Welcome to this week's episode of Life Without Baggage. I have a really interesting and accomplished guest today. Today my guest is Jenna Lee Samuel. She's the pastor and host of Java with Jen. And we're going to be talking about partnering with God in your business, in your finances. So let me read a little bit about what she's done. Jen is the host of Java with Jen podcast, where she normalizes learning to hear God's voice for her Christian audience in a let your hair down, authentic and encouraging way. She is a podcast coach and the CEO of Imagine Media Podcast Network and has a globally ranked top 1% show listened to in over 107 countries. And she's had over 95 Excellent guests like Sean Bowles, Jamie Lynn Wallnow, actress Christina DeRosa, movie director Tim Che, and many others. So she's been seen in various media outlets. I'm not even going to mention them all, but I was really impressed by the um, red carpet host uh, and the cast and crew, the inside look interviewer. So that Mm -hmm. must have been fun. (laughs) It was. So we're going to be talking with Jen about partnering with God in your business. So thank you for joining us. Absolutely. And thank you for not reading my entire bio. (laughs) It's so long and I'm like, I really need to shorten that thing. (laughs) So I'm going to ask you about listening to God, being able to sense how he's speaking to you. And then we'll pivot into applying that to our creativity, creative business ideas, podcast ideas, Um, I know you have a wealth of information. So first I'm going to ask, how do you learn to hear God for yourself? How did you do it, Jen? Sure. Okay. So everyone learning to hear God is going to happen a little bit differently because it's kind of like, and I tell my kids this, I'm like, you know, the way my husband talks to me is going to be very different. And the, and the, 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 the rhythm and the groove and the way we, the nuances to the way we communicate with each other is going to be different than the way my kids communicate with him or then the way people at our church communicate with him, the way his best. I mean, all of us have our own unique way with the Lord, just like we have our own unique way with the people we're in relationship with. And so I think that kind of breaks some of the pressure of people feeling like they've got to do it this one certain way of hearing God's voice. Now, there are some principles that guide that Obviously, being in the word of God is one way that we learn how to hear God's voice. It's how you learn to recognize the kinds of things he might say and the kinds of things he might not say. Uh, but the way it started for me was uh, I was in Bible Bible school. And I remember, actually, I wasn't necessarily setting out to learn to hear his voice, though I did want to. But I was actually asking the Lord to teach me how to enjoy praying, because even though I'd grown up Christian Everyone that came to the Bible school and would talk about prayer and intercession made it sound like this horrible suffering, like in travail, I wept before the Lord for hours. And I was like, oh, that sounds awful, you know? And so like, nobody was making it look appealing, you know? So I asked the Holy Spirit, I was like, Lord, it probably would be a good thing for me to like praying. So can you just teach me how to pray in a way that I will enjoy. And so sure enough, he, I just kind of felt this, um, idea come to me and it was, it was like, he was speaking in my heart. And that's also what I tell my children. It's like, God speaks in your heart. It's like a whisper in your heart. And, uh, and the Lord said to me, he said, generally, I just want you to spend 20 minutes a night in prayer. He said, it doesn't sound like much, but it's going to change your life. And I mm-hmm. said, okay, I can do 20 minutes, you know? And so the first couple of nights, 
I had lots to pray about because I didn't have much of a prayer life before that, right? So I had lots of things I needed to catch up on. But then by the third or fourth night, I kind of was running out of stuff. And so then I was like, well, now what do I do? I've got 20 minutes to burn, you know, like let's let's figure out what to do here. And so I just kind of would sit and ask the Lord, like, well, Lord, I'm here. Uh, do you need me to pray for anything? Is there anything on your heart? And then somebody would kind of come across my mind, real light. Mm. It's almost like when a feather blows in the air. It's it's just real light. And, uh, and so someone just kind of came across my mind and it took me a while to recognize that that was the Holy spirit putting them in my view. And so then, you know, maybe it was someone I didn't even know very well. And so I'd be like, well, Lord, I don't, I don't know what they're dealing with. So is there something I should be praying about for them? You know, and he would maybe bring an impression like pray for financial breakthrough or, and it was just kind of more like ideas that would come. It wasn't even super explicit or super strong. It's very subtle, very nuanced. And it almost, it, you can miss it as easily as you catch it, you know? And um, so when I would get these real subtle impressions, I would just pray into it, you know? And I would just kind of, if I wasn't sure what to say or what to do, I would just ask the Lord, what should I pray? What should I ask you for? You know? And so he would kind of just lead me one little inch at a time. And uh, what that did is it cultivated inside of my heart this sensitivity to consult with the Lord and to get his feedback on things. But it also cultivated in my heart a discernment to recognize when he was speaking versus when it was my own thoughts or my own ideas. And so it really, truly did change my life because from there... I got to where I'd be in situations and I would be able to just in my spirit lean into the Lord a little bit, kind of almost like turn my turn my gaze to him to read his facial expression kind of thing is like what the posture on the inside feels like. And I would get senses or nudges or impressions from him of how to respond to a situation. And um, so that's how the journey began for me. And of course, you know, there's always there's always trial and error. There's always room for error. There's always moments where we're like, is that really you, Lord? I need some confirmation, you know, but there are, it, it comes in varying ways. He has multiple different ways of speaking to us. Um, but the first step is just trying, getting out there and kind of putting your toe in the water. <laughs> yeah. And knowing that he wants to speak to us, Yeah, but we have to be still long enough to get used to the idea that, you know, it's time to listen. A lot of people pray, but a lot of us don't think about, so now wait and listen, see what, yeah. you know, see what the Lord might want to respond. Like you said, an image, an impression, a thought, somebody's face. So these are very subtle. And that's maybe why people don't realize the Lord is speaking to you all the time. Yeah. And I, I honestly really believe that the busyness of our culture, and, and I don't want this to sound too conspiracy-ish, but I think the enemy is very intentional in what he's doing. And the fact that our culture now is built around so much mental stimulation, so much activity, so much noise, I have noticed that it takes more effort for me to quiet myself enough to hear the Lord than it used to. And it's because my brain is, is you, because I mean, when the Lord speaks to your spirit, it does surface into your brain. So your brain is a part of the equation and, and by being overstimulated all the time and always consuming social media or always just staying busy, we shut down the avenues by which the Lord speaks because God's not in a hurry. God's not urgent. He's not worried that he's going to run out of time. He has all the time in the world. And so he is not in the lane of haste. He's in the lane of rest. He's in the lane of peace. And so until we get in his lane of rest and peace and be still and know that I am God, it's going to be hard to hear his voice. Yeah. So that's, that's that cultivating some time with the Lord at the beginning of the day, if possible, mm -hmm. so that you can carry that with you. Yeah. And the discernment develops, doesn't it? When we get in the habit of listening, we start to recognize that there's a tug at our hearts. That's, I always say, you know, it's like I get ideas that are way better than I know what I'm capable of. It's like, wow, that was a great idea. I know that was the Lord. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. So at some point, I'm assuming that you began to lean into your connection with the Holy Spirit to get ideas of how to proceed in your various business ventures. I know you're a pastor too, but we're going to focus on business. And this can include a hobby where maybe there is 
some hobby, some skill you have that you could develop. Some people make money off their hobbies. There's That's a great idea, I think. So tell us about how you would see that occurring, partnering with God for a business or even building a hobby or a podcast. Yeah. For me, it honestly, starting a podcast and starting my business, in fact, I was talking to my sister yesterday and she listens to my stories about being an entrepreneur and the the struggle that is there. You know, it is not easy being an entrepreneur. Um but it's it's different as a believer when you're empowered by the Holy Spirit than it is for people in the world who don't have that, right? And so, but even still, she's like, oh, I would never want to be an entrepreneur. And I was like, you know, I didn't get in this lane on purpose. I got in this lane because I was asking the Lord for a way to make some money and to um, meet a need. And I just kind of looked around. They said the best way to start a business is look around and see what people are asking you for. <laughs> and sure uh, enough, I had like six people asking me to help them start a podcast. And I was like, well, I guess I could do a mastermind. And so I just was like, let's just do something really simple and see what comes, you know? So it was, it was very much on a whim. Even starting my podcast was on a whim because even though I'm married to a pastor, I didn't have a lot of opportunity for preaching. I did when I was young and single, um, lots of opportunity. And I think that was the Lord just encouraging the giftings in me. But then once I became married and moved to the South and he was the pastor and I was just the pastor's wife, there was no opportunity. And so it was very, very uh, painful. It was very, very alienating. And um, I felt very overlooked for a long time. And so I finally realized like, generally at the end of your life, you're going to stand before the Lord without anyone next to you asking how you used your gifts. And I'm not going to be able to say, well, Lord, you put me in the South with a husband <laughs> who didn't know how to pull me in, you know, or in the South where they don't believe in women preachers, you know, or whatever. There will be no excuses. The Lord will be like, and so what'd you do? What was your work around? You know? So I just decided, well, I'm going to start a podcast then because that sounds less scary, like less equipment to worry about. I don't have to put makeup on to have a podcast though. Look at me. I have makeup on. So, um, that's how my podcast started. And, uh, just sitting at a kitchen table with a friend, I just said on a whim, I think I'm going to need this as an outlet. And so that's how it started. And now it's successful. And the Lord has challenged me in recent times to really take ownership and not look at my podcast or my business as these backup plans or these, well, on a whim, maybe this will work. And, and I just feel like the Lord has been like, you need to take this very seriously. This is what I've called you to as, along with ministry, but I've also called you to this. And so I feel like there is actually a movement that is happening in the church. I've heard prophets speak about it. It's been prophesied over my own life um, that there is a movement that God is doing of raising up marketplace ministers, people who love the spirit of God and love his principles and, and are tapped into his voice and into his leadership. And they pull that into their business models. And I'm seeing that happen. I can't even tell you there have been Malton, in fact, I'm going to have one of them on my show, Ed Rush. He teaches people how to hear God's voice for your business. I had one of the business coaches I had hired. He did a free webinar, how to hear God's voice for your business. You know, it's so like, it's a thing right now, but it's a thing because that's what God is doing. And so if, if someone has some giftings or talents, we have a commission in the word of God to steward our giftings and talents, to multiply them like the parable of the talents. You know, the one who was wicked, who went and buried his talent, he did it in fear. He reasoned and logicked his way out of obedience. He said, oh, my master is angry and he's a harsh man. So I'm just going to bury this. So at least I can give him his money back. He took the safe path that was the easy path. And it was the fear-based path. And he was considered a wicked, unfaithful servant. But the other two, they were businessmen. And the master did not tell them how to use the money. He didn't tell them what to do with it. He just said, I'm going to come back in. I'm going to check in and see what you did with it. He didn't even tell them to start businesses. But apparently they did because they multiplied it. And so they were the ones considered faithful because they took what he gave them. They multiplied it. And they were able to give him back more. And I feel like that's the mandate on our life. So if someone has a hobby or a way to serve the people around them and they've been looking for a way to make money or to they feel a restlessness, they want to just step into more. Look at the giftings God's put on your life. Look what people are asking you for and ask the Lord, how can I multiply this to give back to you when I stand before you at the end of my life? That's that's what drives me. Mm -hmm. Those are really good things for us to think about. I have a lot of female followers. There are men as well. And the principles are the same. Mm 
But if we if we don't recognize the good things God has put in us, if we're looking at this person or that person and think, well, I'm not like them or I don't know how to do this. Um, I started this podcast at the end of 2021. I had no interest in starting a podcast. <laughs> and it was just uh, a, through a few circumstances over just a couple of days, it was kind of put in my face, maybe you should do a podcast. And so it came hard enough that I thought, well, I'm going to ask the Lord. And the Lord confirmed it a couple different ways. The message that week at church was about stepping out to build the kingdom. And it's like, Okay, I guess that's a yes. So I didn't have any idea what to do. So I just prayed, Lord, okay, how do I do this? So of course, I went to YouTube, how to start a podcast. But it certainly helps if someone else tells you, you can do this, you can do that. Here's the platforms. But I had to choose to obey. Uh, it wasn't, I didn't know anything about it. But I chose to obey and I just took the next step which mm -hmm. I'm sure is some of what you have done. You take the next step and sometimes mm -hmm. the door closes, but other times it's like, wow, I didn't even know this terrain was here. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I mean, that's how I have a podcast network now as well for people once they've started their podcast with me. You know, there's so much more to having a podcast than just starting it. You know, that's like, there's so much more to marriage than just the wedding day, <laughs> right? You got to grow, you got to learn, you got to explore. And so with same with podcasting, like there's no point having a podcast if you're not growing it and, and trying to find the people you're supposed to be reaching. And so, yeah, there's a, there's a whole process, but um, it's been a fun journey. And so that's what my network is for as well, for people who want to grow their shows. So what other principles would you say are important to understand, to partner with God, to build your business, to build your podcast, to build your, maybe your side hustle? Yeah. Well, one of the most important principles is to understand and to believe truly that God wants us to flourish. God wants us to flourish, not because of some American dream and because, you know, we just want to live this luxury life. He wants us to flourish because in this world, we are meant to have dominion and to rule and to reign. You can't rule or reign very well if everything that you do is barely enough, barely surviving, not able to pay the bills. Like you've got to be able to have some dominion. I mean, back in the Old Testament, Jacob, uh, Moses, like all these different people who were the, the forefathers of our faith, Solomon, they, they had nations, they owned nations, they owned armies, they were the wealthiest of their time. And the scripture says that their wealth was a sign of the fact that they were in covenant with a living God, the God of Israel. And so do I believe that wealth is always a sign of that? No. There are some people who are called to called to very simple lives and that is okay. But if God has put it in your heart that that there must be more and you want to be a resource. Like for me, one of the number one things that drives me crazy when I don't have money to work with is that I'm not able to share. I'm not able to send money to the missionaries that come to our church. I'm not able to give money to that single mom I see at the grocery store. Like it makes me mad when I don't have money to serve people with. And money is a resource. It's a tool. And having business is essentially not just about having money, but it's about serving people, being a solution to problems in the earth. And so understanding that God wants you to flourish, God wants you to succeed because you are an answer to a problem in the earth. In fact, the, the sewing machine came through a dream that God gave the guy, the singer or whatever that invented it, that came through a divine dream. There are multiple inventions. I want to say the light bulb itself also came through a dream. There are multiple inventions throughout history that came from God giving people dreams. Many, many medical breakthroughs have come through dreams. Many, many uh, practical breakthroughs in the industrial world have come through dreams. And so God is giving people strategy because he wants to solve problems in the earth, but he needs people to do that through. And so that's one of the most important foundations. If you can believe that, then when you go to the Lord, you're going to pray differently. You're going to hear differently. You're going to expect a different answer to your prayers. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to back up what you just said with the scripture. And that's Isaiah 11 two, that the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. That's Jesus. But if mm -hmm. you have Jesus in your heart, this is you too. The spirit of wisdom, which means the best means to the best end. 
the spirit of understanding, which means discernment to know what what's right, what's wrong, the spirit of counsel, and the spirit of might. So the spirit of counsel are strategies. Yeah. And these are the might is related to dominion, like what mm -hmm. you just said. So you can lean into the Holy Spirit. You can lean into the Lord. You can pray, Lord, I need your spirit of wisdom. I need your spirit of understanding. Increase this in me. Show me how to mm -hmm. operate in it. Because the Lord will give you strategies. When mm -hmm. I'm counseling people, I ask the Lord, all right, what do we need to do here? Because mm -hmm. we need a strategy that, uh, you know, we're here against this wall and consistently the Lord will give me like something. I always ask for simple strategies, something very simple. It's like, try doing this and you know, yeah. that takes care of it. They stop bugging me or whatever, or make yeah. a joke. I mean, sometimes it's really simple, but it, the Lord wants to give you strategies for problems. You're solving in your family problems. You're solving in your business even, you know, hobbies that I was making, I was trying to make a flag, uh, a worship flag. This was a long time ago. And the Lord would give me these little pictures in my head of how to solve how I wanted, to, like I needed a way to make this look a certain way. And I'm not very artistic. And I would see it. I would see it like a snapshot. It's like, oh, I can do it that way. That's uh -huh. the Lord. That's yeah. the Lord. And he'll do that for anybody that yeah. wants to sit still and listen. Yeah, that's so good. You know, I, uh, I, there's many, there's been many times that with my business, you know, if I get stuck, I'll be like, God, what, what can I do? And there was one point where I was like, I was not finding any clients. And I was like, where are my clients? I know they're somewhere. Where are they? And the Lord gave me the idea to go connect in a Facebook group. And literally, I think that day or the next day, I walked away with two clients and I was like, well, that was easy, you know, and that was because I just consulted the Lord. And, uh, you know, recently I will say this, this is really important for those who are going to pursue a business or they're, they're want to take seriously what the Lord's put in their hands, whatever it is, ministry or non-ministry, have an intercessory team that prays for you because I have, I have a group of intercessors. We all kind of pray for each other, but we're very serious about the seven mountains of influence and culture and taking those mountains. And I'm on the media mountain, but actress Christina DeRosa. She's in our prayer group. And, uh, and so I reached out to them the other day and I was like, Hey guys, I'm finding that some of the, the, the kinds of guests that I'm getting on my show start to feel very repeat after a while. Like I need some fresh guests with very unique stories. And, uh, immediately they were like, okay, here's this, here's this, here's this. And Christina's like, let me introduce you to this actor. Let me introduce you to this person. Da -da. And so having people in your corner that are both praying for what your goals and priorities are, but that are also just your encouragers coming alongside of you, that has been everything to me. And so have an intercessory team, huge. Okay. So these are all great ideas. Tell us a little bit more about your business, Jen. Yeah, absolutely. So if someone's interested in podcasting, when I got started back in 2017, um, it was before it was kind of starting to have its heyday. Back then, blogging was still the thing and YouTubing was really big. Um, but I didn't have anybody to learn from. So it took me a good solid three years between losing our home and Hurricane Harvey and then taking a ministry sabbatical and figuring out what I was doing. It took three years to get my show off the ground. And it was frustrating. Like I wanted to quit like 2,755 times. Like <laughs> it was a lot. And, uh, and I just remember when people started reaching out for help, I was like, you know what? I can finally be a solution to the problem that I didn't have, you know? And so when people started coming to me, they saw that my show was successful and it was ranking in nations all over the place and whatever. And so I was like, you know what, let me help you. Let me make it as easy as possible. So you don't try quitting on yourself because not everybody will push through for three years. Right. And so that's how my business started. And that's what I enjoy doing, um, helping people get their show started. And then once it's up, like I mentioned, the podcast network, uh, I have a community where they can continue growing, continue with monthly coaching and um, grow their show and have a successful experience podcasting. It's been a wonderful time. Thanks so much for these ideas. So we're running out of time. How can people find out more about you, about your business, about your podcast? Sure. They can come find me on Instagram at Java with Jen. That's just one N. Um, you can also go to Java with Jen podcast.com. Just to keep it simple, just go to that one place. I keep all my most important links at the top. 
And uh, if I'm offering freebies, you'll find them there. If you want to listen to the show, you can find them there. If I'm doing any promos, um, I usually will email my email list. So you're going to want to get on my email list if I'm if you're interested in coaching. I also, if you get on my email list, I will send out freebies and just gifts to you that will help you in your podcasting journey. If you're kind of getting your feet wet, kind of exploring the idea. I love setting people up for success. My goal is to make it hard to fail at podcasting mm-hmm. if you work with me. <laughs> so okay. um, yeah, javawithjenpodcast.com. Okay, so I generally close with prayer. And since you're also a pastor and clearly you know the word of God, I'm gonna ask you to pray a blessing over each person listening that they would be able to hear God's voice for whatever it is that that they need strategies for. Absolutely. Father, we just thank you so much for each person within the sound of my voice right now. And Lord, you know each of your children. You know the tools and the giftings that you've given them. You know the the compassions and the burdens that you've put inside of them. And Holy Spirit, for anyone who's listening, who has been feeling quickened, that they need to, whether that's start a podcast, start a business, start a side hustle, um, get in ministry, whatever it is that they've been feeling you touching their heart about, Holy Spirit, I ask that you'd bring really clear provision, really clear confirmation, and you would surround them with people who would support the vision and who would encourage them and who would pray for them. Lord, I ask that you would connect them to their next steps and that they would recognize that it's you connecting them to their next steps, that you would open doors that no man can open. And that you would close doors that no man can shut, that you would order their steps, that they are divinely ordered by the Lord. Father, that you would give them the shrewdness and the faithfulness to steward and to multiply what you have put inside of their hands, that when they stand before you, Lord, they will stand before you and hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. And so, Father, just bless them. Thank you for this increase on their life. Thank you for this increase in their giftings, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that prayer. Absolutely. So so this was Life Without Baggage. This is Dr. Tony Cooper. My guest today was Jen from Java with Jen. And if this helped you, share it with a friend. Talk to you next time. 